What is up, heroes? This is Midnight Zero, and welcome back to the Let's Play C Celeste Blind. Wow. <laughs> Professor Layton in the Curious Village Blind. <laughs> in the last episode, we, uh, we struggled quite a bit. Um, I didn't really enjoy many of the puzzles. I didn't really agree with a lot of the solutions, nor understand a lot of the logic that would lead to you solving them without some of the hints. And mentioning the hints, uh, we used hints for the first time, much to my uh, displeasure. <laughs> but in this episode, I'm a little bit more optimistic. It's actually been a couple weeks since I last played the game, so I am a little bit rusty, and I appreciate that we have this Story So Far segment to remind us what exactly was going on. In the course of their afternoon-long investigation through St. Mystere, Luke and Layton stumble on a rumor about some mysterious kidnappings. The professor has a hunch that Raymond's disappearance and these kidnappings must be connected. In a quest for further details, the intrepid pair continue their search of St. Mysterio into the night. And then I believe we were actually on our way to the cafe. Yes, that is the case. We have this lovely nighttime music. Again, I'm more optimistic. Um, I know there are going to be hundreds of puzzles in this game, and surely not all of them will resonate well with me. Um, not all of them will have, you know, the most intact logic for me to do things right off the bat, and some of it is, of course, me coming to terms with my own pride in my uh, puzzle-solving abilities and not getting too <laughs> ashamed when it doesn't work out super well. But nevertheless, um, let's see what we have here. I believe... Did we talk to this person? I think we already did already. I run a fresh meat stand in the market by day. Come see me and I'll cut you a deal on Tenderloin that'll make your mouth water. Oh, good to know. So, what we can do... I believe we were about to head to the cafe, but we wanted to check out what's going on up here first. Did we already talk to him? Ah! Oh, I can't sleep because of this stupid puzzle I've been tossing and turning for hours! I know, we saw him when he was really upset uh, over by that one lady who had the alien puzzle, but I'm gonna lose it for real this time if I don't figure it out. Ah! Also, thank you to those of you that were patient um, with my frustrations. It, it's it's meaningful to know that I'm supported, even if you disagree. Um, what do we have going on here? A star the same shape and size as the one shown on the right is hidden somewhere in this picture. Trace its outline below. Wow. Um, okay. I'm trying to think of like a particularly useful strategy here. But I'm not really, I'm not really seeing one, <laughs> or I'm not really able to think of one. What initially comes to mind is trying to find, um, I mean, look at the the different points on the star, right? Or the different, I guess, triangular arms of the star, and try to identify such shapes or similarly sized shapes within the the picture. But I'm not really seeing it. The other thing is. Oh, I actually, I think I see it. I was going to say, um, look for pentagons. Regular pentagons that have similarly shaped, uh, what's it called? Arms around it. But I think this is it here. Right? Uh, oh, wait, no, yeah, we can go around like that and then up there. That looks pretty close, if you ask me. Just to get a better tracing, I'm going to go around a little bit more cleanly. Not exactly a great artist, certainly not with a mouse. No! Oh, every time I... Wow, it automatically clears, so it has to be in one. Now, granted, I've, I've mentioned I'm not playing this with a DS's touchscreen, so forgive my sloth when it comes to tracing this, but I think that's pretty accurate. I was just kind of keeping an eye out for pentagons, and, but I... Yeah, I mean, that looks about the right size and shape, so we'll go. I mean, the only other way to really rule out this shape would be to look for it in other places, but I don't really see pentagons, um, at least regular pentagons, too prominent. So, we'll give this a go and see see if it works. How does this sound? All right. I did it! Yes! <laughs> All right, well, let's see what they have to say. Doesn't spotting a star earn you a free wish? Wish upon a star. Do you guys always appreciate those jokes? It's like, oh, like if you had a, a genie grant you a wish, what would you wish for? And of course, you know, there's like the, oh, I want to be a Super Saiyan, or I want to be a Power Ranger, or I want to have a pet dinosaur, or something like that. But then there's always that, like, kid in the back of the class who smirks and is like, I'd wish 
for three more wishes. And everybody be like, oh, that's such a good idea. <laughs> Anyways, hey, why'd you have to go and tell me the answer? I've been thinking of an answer for days now, and you just go and ruin it. Thanks a lot, you jerk. Oh, I feel you, Polly. <laughs> I feel you so much. I'm totally like that when it comes to puzzles, if you guys didn't already uh, notice. Okay, so with that, um, I think... Can we go in here? We can. Who are you? Have we been here at all before? I don't think so. We're in prosciutto's. Alright, we found ourselves a hint coin, which I guess I actually care a bit now, or about now, because... We used some. Um, I figured this meat hanging up here would be relevant. Look, it's a hidden puzzle. Of course it is. 114 tetrahedron trial. 10 picarets. So we all know this is going to be one that gives me a lot of difficulty, right? <laughs> if the last episode was any indicator. Um, the image below is of a tetrahedron that has been disassembled so that each of its four faces lie flat. Okay. Which of the triangles should you insert in, p in place of the question mark so that when the tetrahedron is put together, both the red and blue lines continue unbroken from one face to the next? Okay, so um, part of what's difficult about this is obviously the spatial um, spatial awareness or the spatial reasoning to kind of manipulate the sides of the tetrahedron. So what I'm thinking is what we're going to want to do is take this edge. Oh, I can't really draw. Um, so there's a highlighted yellow triangle. If we take the right side of said triangle, that is going to connect with the right side of the top triangle in the diagram. And then the bottom side of the highlighted yellow triangle is going to connect with or adjoin the bottom side of the lower left triangle in the diagram. So I think that's what we're going to want to have be a continuation. Um, clearly, that when folded, um, the lines drawn are going to have to connect in some regard. Unfortunately, <laughs> um, I get the feeling that these answer choices are, are rotated awkwardly, so we're going to have to mentally do that a little bit ourselves too. So what's going to be a good way to go about it? Um, I mean, we could just look at each one and see if we can rotate it and get it to work. So A, if we look at A, if we place it just kind of as is, it's not going to work. If we rotate it and then place it, eh, that's not going to work either. If we rotate it again, that's also not going to work. Um, one way to look at it is on all the different faces or the edges of A, um, if it's going to connect with the triangle immediately adjacent to the highlighted triangle, so that center triangle in the diagram, it needs to have two red lines, I guess, leaving one of the sides of the triangle. And that only happens on one side of A, and when it does, they're too close together to actually fit. So I don't think it's going to be A. Now we look at B, and we look at C and D, and they all have similar width for where those two lines on that one side are going to um, adjoin the the center triangle in the diagram. Wow, this is really 10 picarets. I'm probably taking way too long and overanalyzing this, but that tells us which side or how we're going to orient all these triangles, right? And that's really important. So let's see here. One other thing to note that allows us to rule out D is that the blue line needs to connect between the two red lines when they leave on that edge. So D, you can see blue is on the outside of those two lines. So we're not A or D, so we're between B and C. Now, how can we differentiate between the two? Well, at first glance, when you reorient the triangles, where does the blue line go? It originates between the two red um between the two red lines on that one edge but in the b one so if you were to align it in the diagram so that the two red edges connect with their appropriate side the the blue is actually going to be going towards the lower left triangle in the diagram for b but for c it's going to be going to the top one. 
I think. <laughs> Do you see what I'm saying? So if you take B and rotate it mm, counterclockwise, like 90 degrees, and then kind of plop it in the question mark triangle, it looks like the blue line would be going to the lower left triangle. It would be going off the lower side of the of the highlighted, uh, like the bottom side of the highlighted yellow triangle. Yeah, it would be. Whereas if you were to do the same with C, and rotate that clockwise 90 degrees, and then plop it where the yellow triangle is, the blue line will actually be going off of the right side of the highlighted triangle, and thus would connect to the top triangle in the diagram. Why is that important? Well, if you put B there, and you have the blue line connecting to the lower left triangle, well, like we said earlier, the bottom side of the yellow triangle is adjoining or connecting with the bottom side of the left, the lower left triangle in the diagram. Notably, there's no blue line on that bottom side of the lower left triangle, so I don't think it can be B. So I think C is our answer. Let's give it a go. Admittedly, not a lot of picarettes at stake. And that's correct. And that is probably <laughs> an excessively complex analysis of how to get that question correct. When I'm sure you could just be like, yeah, I'll, I'll take a look at it, I'll turn my head a little bit and figure out how it is. Um, but, but that's, I guess, a relatively, I guess, logical way to go about it step by step, right? Look at the connectivity of the different sides and see which sides need to connect to which or what are the requirements. Um, yeah, <laughs> I don't have a whole lot more to offer to that one. But it all started with deciding, you know, or being able to visualize when you fold these back up, which sides are going to connect. Anyways, done. Let's go find more puzzles. Find more puzzles we shall. Let's talk to this fine fellow here, Prosciutto. Hey, what do you want? Start jawing so I can get back to dinner. Jawing. I think that's the first time I've ever heard of that phrase or that verb, I guess, uh, or the, the word jaw used as a verb to describe somebody talking. So I suppose you haven't seen Raymond, the servant from Reinhold Manor, have you? Gobble snarf nom nom. <laughs> of course I've seen him. He's kind of hard to miss with those huge purple lips. But I haven't seen him today. Now, if you haven't noticed, I'm in the middle of important business here. Could you leave me alone now? Of course, please excuse the interruption. Wow, I'm surprised he wasn't like... And for interrupting me, I'll have you solve this really difficult puzzle now. Because, <laughs> you know, this is that's how Leighton tends to go. Alright, well, I guess we'll head out then. Um, I'm sure if we come back maybe later on, we'll be able to find ourselves another puzzle. But, alright. I guess it's finally time to go into the cafe? Question mark? I think so. Let's uh, let's see what awaits us inside here. Interesting. We have our mustache friend, and then we have our rather large nose friend. Is there? Wow, there's something hidden here. Professor, there's a puzzle hidden over here. <laughs> the joys of just kind of clicking around and how many glasses? Okay. On the top row of the picture shown below, you have three cups of juice, followed by three empty cups. Your objective is to change things around so that the cups are arranged as shown in the bottom row of the picture. Assuming you can only move one cup at a time and that all, re and that all rearrangement has to be done by hand, how many cups will you have to pick up? Gotcha. I think it's only... How many cups will you have to pick up? Not how many moves will you have to make. I think it's going to be like four. Oh, so I can I can draw. But I guess the first thing you could do is um is you can move this cup here, and then you would move this cup here. Basically, you would switch the two, and you'd be good. Because I think if you do that right, so if you first move that, then you'll have I guess. Orange, orange, empty, empty, orange, empty. And then you move one of the empties back, and then you'll have orange, empty, orange, empty, orange, empty. Yeah, so I think you actually only have to pick up two. I 
I wonder if they're gonna do something kind of like wordy where it's like well you pick up one of them and you put it where the other one is although no you actually only need to swap I was gonna say if you move one cup at a time oh hmm so I guess maybe they're not being that particular like yeah, particular about it. I'm thinking like if you were to pick up one and then try to place it, you would have to move the other cups out of the way. Would those count as picking up a, a cup? Right? But can you do so while holding that? Oh, I know what they want you to do. That is, that is sneaky, Professor Layton. That is sneaky. You just pick up this cup here and you pour it into this one. Oh, Professor Layton, you are sneaky. <laughs> That's what they want. That's totally what they want. <laughs> That's totally what they want. It's one. It's one. I think I've got it. Yep. Wow. I would have totally missed that. I would have totally missed that. That's right, pour the contents of the second cup into the fourth cup, and then return it to its original position. Yep. Wow. <laughs> Easy. Let's go find more puzzles. That was a pretty nice one. Anything else of interest in here? Any of these picture frames? No? Okay. Alright, we'll chat with you first, then. And who might you be? Zapon. <laughs> oh, fancy meeting you here. I've got a doozy of a puzzle right now. It's harder to crack than a coconut. And who knows, it might even have something to do with the case you're investigating right now. Ooh, what the- what a bait. So, what do you say? Help a fellow detective out, will you, brother? That's all very interesting, but I do believe there's been a mistake here. I'm no detective, you see. Say no more, undercover and all that then, yes. Very well, but I know a fellow sleuth when I see one. <laughs> oh, Professor Layton. Poor Professor Layton. Us being in the same trade and all. I suppose it couldn't hurt if I let you have a look at this puzzle. Ah, so Zapone himself is uh, a detective. The town barbers, another ten pick rat. Oh man, now the ten pick rat puzzles are the scary ones. A certain town only or has only two barbers in it. There aren't any other towns nearby, so everyone who lives there gets their hair cut by one of these two stylists. Wow, they look quite different. <laughs> Looking at these two fine gentlemen, which one should you go to for a haircut? Huh? Looking at these two fine gentlemen, which one should you go to for a haircut? So, I mean, obviously A looks sloppier, doesn't have a lot of hair, etc. Um, and B looks more presentable, but I feel like there's... <laughs> Wait, what am I supposed to reason here? I feel like I don't have anything to work with. What? There are only two options? I... I don't know. There's got to be something tricky about their appearance or whatever it may be. Like... Like is one of them missing a hand or something, you know? I don't even know what... what... Hairstylist B is holding. Is it a comb? Does A have a... What, what's in his, you know, frock it? <laughs> the only thing I'm feeling is that it's like, oh, B is the obvious answer, but this is Professor Layton, so it's probably gonna be A. Um... Oh, I see. <laughs> this is interesting. So I think what they want you to do is actually use the logic of, well, each of these barbers must also get a haircut. 
And they obviously can't cut their own hair because, um, well, so they must cut each other's hair. That's, I think, the logic you're supposed to use. So B must cut A's hair and A must cut B's hair. Thus, we would want A to cut our hair because B didn't do quite the best job with A's hair. I think that's the logic they want us to use. Yeah, I think they want us to make the assumption that they don't cut their own hair. Um, which I guess would technically fall under, yes, they are cut, having their hair cut by one of the two stylists, but I think they want us to assume they're not cutting their own hair. And if that's the case, B did not do a great job with A's hair, so instead we will choose A because A did an excellent job with B's hair. I think I've got it! All right. Legend's Apprentice saves the day! <laughs> so funny, that's so tricky! That's right, everyone in the village gets their hair cut. This includes the two barbers. Yep. Wow. Yeah, um... That was surprisingly tricky for ten pick rats. Oh, you've done it! You've solved that monster of a riddle! Simply astounding. Even I couldn't do it! Oh, it wasn't that difficult. But on a more important subject, have you heard word from Raymond lately? What's that you say, good sir? You want to solve more puzzles? <laughs> Alright, then here's a gem of a tip. Go visit Granny Riddleton's shack. That's all I can say. My detective's instinct tells me that another case is developing as we speak. I must take my leave now, but perhaps I'll see you again tomorrow. Interesting. Why... Why must we go there now? Well, I guess we're gonna chat with this person before we go, but interesting. Your name is Crumb? Ho oh, there! I've never seen your mug in here before. What'll it be, pal? Oh, I'm not ordering anything. I actually just came to, by to inquire about a certain matter. Hm. <laughs> Let here for the special then, huh? Well, what do you want to know? No one has seen or heard from Raymond, the servant at Reinhold Manor, since this afternoon. We've looked about everywhere, to no avail. It's like he just vanished from St. Mysterio. While talking with Crouton earlier, he mentioned a strange old man who was said to lurk around the village. Do you perchance know anything about such an individual? An old man? Oh, right. That old rumor. So you have heard of him before. If you have any information, anything at all, please share it with us. Hmm. Only if you solve this puzzle. <laughs> You're not from here, are you? Thing is, I can't have you spreading crazy rumors about St. Mysterio to the outside world, now can I? Of course, if you're a puzzle lover, then maybe, just maybe, I could find it in me to trust you. <laughs> Whoa, I see you've solved 30 puzzles. Alright, then here's an earful for you. I know a fellow who swears up and down that he saw a strange old geezer skittering about town. The fellow I know is Prosciutto. He's a wee one, but he's got the appetite of a wolverine. Do you know where we might find this Prosciutto? Can't say for sure, but at this hour, well, he's probably at home snacking or something. This house is on the road that winds up north from here. Why don't you go and pay that walking ice box a visit? Interesting. So we didn't actually have to solve a puzzle to get that information. Well, we've obviously needed to solve 30. We've got quite a few more than that. Because I feel like that's more of a side quest, more of a special, something extra, I'm going to go for that first rather than go to Granny Riddleton's at the moment. All right, Prosciutto. Fess up. What have you been up to? What do you know? Hey, what do you want? Start drawing so I can get back to dinner. Heard from a fellow at the cafe that you witnessed a strange old man or strange old man prowling about town. Can I ask you for a more detailed account of what you saw? Ah, okay. Chomp. Nom nom nom. <laughs> I think it was something like four days ago. It was on my way home. I was on my way home from the market when I saw this creepy guy sneaking around. Definitely looks creepy. So I took a closer look, right? I wanted to make sure he didn't clean out the butcher before I got there. Up close, it was some spooky old guy with a huge. Gobble snarf. <laughs> Snack. Chomp nom nom. I love that term. Gobble snarf. I yelled at him, but the geezer just bolted. I was all like, man, look at Gramps bust a move. <laughs> I think that weirdo is the one who's been kidnapping people. If you gotta be out at night, watch yourself, you hear? Interesting. Very interesting. And we didn't even have to solve a puzzle for that. Alright, well, then I guess we'll head on out. Yawn. Oh gosh, sorry professor, it's not that the investigation is boring me or anything, I'm just a little sleepy. It's gotten late. Let's report our findings to everyone at the mansion and wrap things up for the day. No! No! Wait. Uh, what? Professor, look over there! Oh my gosh, is that Raymond? 
In a ba in a bag? A body bag? Luke, sir, hold it there. Right behind you. How can he run with such a big bag? It's got Raymond in it. Who else is in there? That's a big bag. Get him, Luke. Get him, Layton. Into the park. Oh, so now the tower is lighting up as if that person maybe went back. Yikes. Oh no, we've lost him. Luke, you saw that too, didn't you? No doubt about it, that was Raymond. Does that mean that the kidnapper killed Raymond too? Steady there, Luke. I think we do well to return to the site of Raymond's abduction. Yeah, and it seems the uh, the tower you know, lit up and now we have that noise. It's clearly in response to the person returning with Raymond. The kidnapper may have left a clue behind, you see. Right, lead on, Professor. Mysterious rumbling was added to your list of mysteries. Dang, so we didn't catch him. Not that I'd expect Leighton and Luke to be the most athletically inclined people of all, but we need to go sweep the site of Raymond's abduction for clues. You're absolutely right, Professor. Hopefully that adrenaline will wake you up, Luke. Professor, look at this! Ooh, that dreadful sound effect. This appears to be identical to the item recovered from the crime scene at Reinhold Manor. Do you think it might help us find who's responsible for both crimes? Perhaps. At any rate, our first priority is to report our findings to Lady Dahlia. Come, Luke. Back to the manor. Ooh, Chapter 4, Night Falls. It's turned dark and Raymond still hasn't returned. Continue the investigation to find clues. We have solved that chapter. After witnessing Raymond's abduction, the Professor and Luke return to the manor to report their findings. We have urgent news. Raymond has been abducted. What? Who? How? I must inform Madame at once. Or, Madam, <laughs> something terrible has happened. So are you saying that Raymond has also been involved in some kind of foul play? No, we can't be sure of that yet. However, time is of the essence. We must organize a search to locate him post-haste. Mr. Layton, what's the meaning of all this? Why do you insist on whipping the town up into a frenzy? The situation has changed recently, Inspector. We saw Raymond being abducted in town. I'm afraid you may have a serial murder case on your hands. We must rally the people of St. Mysterio and organize a search. Mr. Layton, last time I checked, this was my case, not yours. It's too late to start looking tonight. We'll organize a search first thing in the morning. We've no time to debate whether or not to wake a few sleepy villagers. While we sit here bickering, poor Raymond may already be... Everyone, your attention, please! Uh-oh. Did another person die? Honestly, Matthew, can't you see we're busy right now? What is it? My sincerest apologies, madam, but it, it's Raymond. He's... he's returned. Returned? But... Huh? What? Yes, after the professor honored us with a visit, I went to the market to do the shopping. Why do you ask? Just what is going on here? There you have it, Leighton. Now will you finally leave the detective work to the detective? But we saw it. We saw it happen right before our eyes. Raymond, don't you remember any of this? That's enough, Luke. But no, he was... I must apologize, Inspector Chelmy. It was dark out and it seems that I was, was mistaken in what I saw. Oh, he's going on the covert. Covert Leighton on the case. Now, if you'll excuse us, it's been a very long day, and I do believe we could all use a little rest. Hmm, I certainly agree. The last thing I need is some drowsy scholar creating a panic in the village. Yikes. Well, good night to you all, then. Interesting. I mean, it's got to be some sort of imposter. Could this be another Reynolds family portrait? Anything else of interest? I mean, we'll chat with you. See what you have to say, probably another puzzle. No matter how I try, I just can't seem to find that special someone. Tell me, Professor, what does an eligible bachelor like myself have to do to find a girl? I had an epiphany the other day. I think the reason I'm alone is because I can't solve this puzzle. Oh, how I've tried to solve it, but no matter how many nights I spend pondering it, the answer eludes me. Please help me, Professor. I don't want to spend the rest of my life talking to my stuffed animals. Poor Gordon. Interestingly enough, I feel like if he took off his purple jacket, he would look like Mermaid Man. <laughs> 
<laughs> Ooh, make a rectangle. 40 picarats. Ooh, this is exciting. If you want to cut the piece of paper shown in diagram one into two pieces and then reassemble them to form a rectangle, all you have to do is cut the paper as shown in diagram two. However, in order to assemble the pieces as shown in diagram two, you need to flip one of the pieces over before putting them together. Where should you cut the paper if you want to turn the paper in diagram one into a rectangle without flipping either of your two pieces? Oh, I see. Okay. That is actually, um, that's quite cool. And I see it already. Um, I'm pretty sure it's here. Yeah. Because all you need to do is rotate it then. And it just kind of fits right in. And it'll be a 3x5 rectangle. Just like in uh, what they show in the right side of the touch screen. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's it. That's where you would cut it. There we go. All right. Critical thinking is the key to success. <laughs> I love the catchphrases every time. That's right. Now that you know the answer, the puzzle seems quite simple, doesn't it? Oh joy, I'm positively tingling with excitement. With that puzzle solved, I'm sure I'll find a bride in no time. Okay, so, so now I guess we go to sleep, I guess? We'll chat with Matthew and see if he has anything to offer, but Inspector Chelmy and Madame have already retired for the night. Raymond is likely off to the cafe. You've had a very hard day, Professor. Do try and get some rest. Good night, sir. I think that's the game's way of saying, like, you should actually go to bed. It's like when you talk to every NPC and they're like, oh, it'd be nice if you went to sleep right now, or oh, it's such a lovely night to go to sleep. What if we really did just mistake what we saw on the street? Layton's gonna be like, no way, but we can't be too aggressive. <laughs> no, I'm certain that it was Raymond. When we saw him, there wasn't the slightest hint of life in him. He may have lost consciousness, but how odd that he should return healthy as can be an hour later. Stranger still is the fact that he seems to have no memory of what we saw happen to him. It's so peculiar. Plus, Raymond wasn't even the first. Lots of people seem to have had the same experience. Any other village would be in a panic over something like this, but St. Mysterie, well, it's peculiar, that's all. There's something very peculiar about this whole town. Yes, in most places no one would stand for this, but we've seen that St. Mysterie is anything but normal. Hmm. Yeah, I'm trying to remember, was it the was it the bridge operator who had a similar experience? So given that, oh, um, given that it's a, you know, something multiple people have experienced, maybe it is some sort of like brain wiping, brainwashing, memory wiping, I, I don't know, but what would be the purpose of abducting somebody and then, you know, whatever they do, and then an hour later they're back without said memories. I don't know, what's, what's to be gained from that? Regardless, yes, yes, don't you worry, I'll let him know. Oh, hello there. There was a phone call for you. It was from an Inspector Ches something or other. From Inspector Chelmy? He just kept saying that it was urgent and that you should meet him at Reinhold Manor at once. Ooh. Ooh, what do we have now? He probably wants to talk about what happened yesterday. Maybe so. We won't know until we get there, though. Come on, Luke. Alright. So, now we'll head on over. We haven't quite started a new chapter yet. Who are you? And then there was also, um, we didn't get to see what was going on in Granny Riddleton's place, which bugs me, because <laughs> I wish we'd have the opportunity to go there. Um, obviously if we miss the puzzles, they'll be available, um, another time, but I'm a little bit, I guess, concerned I missed out on some story aspect or fun dialogue or whatever it may be. But regardless, we will continue in the next episode. Uh, we'll find out What's going on at Reinhold Manor that has, you know, Inspector Chelmy so urgently reaching out to us? Who is this person? Of course, we're going to solve every puzzle we can along the way. Go out of our way to um, inspect different areas of the town. Obviously, without wasting too much time. But, yeah, I think, I think it'll be worthwhile to talk to some of the villagers on our way. 
Um, stop by Granny Riddleton's, and then of course figure out what what the emergency is at Reinhold Manor. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Um, it felt more enjoyable for me. I felt like there were some clever tricks, uh, even amongst the the simpler puzzles. And then of course um, any that involve a little bit, you know, shapes and math and, and that sort of thing are fun for me. So this was good, and I'm glad to be playing the game again. I hope you guys are enjoying the playthrough and looking forward to the next episode just as much as I am. But until that next episode. Zoo Night Zero, and this mission is complete.